Hey everyone, this is Maribel Blue with another version of KEM Top Talk Reality TV Short on Sin City Rules. Now, as you know, this week was the second episode of Sin City Rules and I took the liberty of making better notes this time because the first time it just seemed I felt I was all over the place, but I think some people got exactly what I was saying. So just a brief synopsis, in the first week's episode, which was the introduction of all the ladies, um, their backgrounds, what it is that they do, etc., etc. Lana was not portrayed in a very fashionable light. And she, of course, was set as the woman that you love to hate. Well, this week, I have a totally different take on her. You're going to be shocked as I go through, you know, a little bit of play-by-play -play of this week's episode. So, the episode started off with Amy, who is actually the instigator between Alicia and Lana. Speaking of which, I'm wearing one of the older versions of my uh, Kinky Magazine shirt. So if you want to get an updated version of the shirt, you should go to www.cafepress.com forward slash kinkymagshop and shop is spelled S-H-O-P-P-E, like shoppy, but shop. Um, you should definitely pick up a shirt. So getting back to the Sin City rules. It started off with Amy and Jennifer actually meeting for coffee because, like I said, this is a, a bunch of producers that took a bunch of women and put them all together, and they're all getting to know each other. So Jennifer and um, Amy, well, Jennifer is the poker player, and Amy is that very Botoxed out woman. Um, who has children and she's getting a divorce and her father who we come to find out is not really her biological father but a man that kind of came in and I guess married her mother and took care of her and you know gave her a last name whatever um she has she has really big daddy issues I mean let's just put it that way her father was killed and as Jennifer was probing questions, she got really hysterical. They were at a coffee shop. It was just completely mortifying. And I was like, okay, clearly this woman has serious daddy issues because there hasn't been this healthy male figure in her life, which is understandable. I mean, I think a lot of women have, you know, fathers that were not a really healthy male figure, especially women in their 40s, but why would I know about that? <laughs> Anybody who knows me knows the truth, right? So, moving on. Um, Lana, then they cut into Lana. She has a house guest who comes over and she's talking about how like this house guest has a playtime with her monkey. And I'm like, so somebody comes over like to play with her monkey? Actually, somebody comes over who has a pet monkey himself, has playtime with her monkey. I've never seen anything like it. I had to rewind and show my sister. She just like walked out of the room like she has seen it all, like she had nothing to say. One of the things that really had me, I don't know, laughing or dumbfounded, there were kind of like two reactions when I saw this, but she's talking to the guy who had his monkey I don't know, for like 10 months or something like that. And she asked him if he had life insurance for the monkey. And he had probably the same face that I had while I was watching this. Apparently, she has life insurance on her monkey or some, oh, a trust fund, not life insurance. She has a trust fund set up for the monkey so that, you know, heaven forbid or God forbid or whoever, you know, whatever forbid, something happens to her, the monkey is covered and he can live the glorious lifestyle that he's living that she provides to him. Okay, moving on. Alicia 
Then they cut into Alicia, who has lunch with uh, Lori and Jennifer. Now, if all of you remember, Lori is the twin who owns these this cosmetic company called Rain Cosmetics. And they talk about, you know, Lana's behavior and all of this stuff. And you know how, like, women are. We all get together. If there's, like, this one person, like, we like her, but we don't like everything about her. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because there's always a group of women that does that. You have that one friend that, that you love, but there's just one thing that they do that just annoys the fuck out of you. And Lana seems to be this person. So as the conversation started. But then while Lori and Jennifer had compassion for um, Alicia and everything that she was saying, she was like, you know, she was saying all of these things about me and why didn't she confront me, et cetera, et cetera. And yes, like if we all have issues with somebody, we all like to be confronted and say, you know, well, I don't know. I shouldn't speak for everybody. The fact of the matter is that somebody doesn't like me, and I've said this before, I could give a fuck less. I mean, it's like I'm not living for anybody else but myself and my family and, and you know, who I need to take care of. So if somebody doesn't like me, I'm not going to go out of my way to make you like me because I really don't care. Um, and this is basically what the lunch was about. It took a turn when Alicia came out and said that Lana was having an affair with one of her bodyguards or her trainer, which I thought that was like really low because it's like you shouldn't say something like that unless you have factual proof. And what made her different from Lana just accepting the fact when Amy said, oh, yeah, like she screws around with married men. So you see, we're all playing the same game. Moving on. So while all of this is going on, while uh, Jennifer and Lori had like this instantaneous compassion for her, once she started getting into, oh, you know, she has, she's been doing this and that with men and all of this stuff, it like changed on her. So it just totally flipped the script on Alicia. Like Alicia now did not look good at all for even saying that. And she went and she told Amy in, I guess, you know, in a scene that we didn't get to see um, of what of what happened. So the show goes on. Um, Amy has some kind of spiritual medium come in because the workplace that she's at is a haunted location. And I think it was a jail. And her father at some point was held in this jail. And the spiritualist is saying all of these things. And she's hysterical crying. She's crying more than the mother is. And this was a woman who lived with this man, you know, who had intimate affairs with this man. You would think that she would be crying more than her own daughter who only knew him up, up until she was three years old. So why is this woman hysterical crying? I don't know. Three years old? I don't remember a lot of things when I was three. So if there was somebody in my life that passed away and I was told about that person, I probably would not react like the way she would. I mean, I would be sad, but I wouldn't be ballistically crying and, and going through the motions like I knew the person my whole entire life. Anyway, um, with that being said, so... Now, um, at some point towards the end of the show, everybody goes to Lori's house because Lori decides enough is enough of this nonsense. Let's get everybody together and kind of hash everything out. And... While everybody's getting along, now this is before Alicia gets there. Lori, of course, Lori's there because it's her house. Lana's there. Um, uh, Jennifer is there. And Jennifer is like, she's the kind of person, she's, she's like this. She's a professional poker player. And she had asked Lana at some point during the show for advice of how does she balance everything. Because her thing is like, if she gets a text message that there's a game going, she could be in the middle of dinner. She could be in the middle of having sex with her husband. If she gets that text message, she's out. 
Now, I don't know if that's good or bad because her husband is kind of hot, you know? It's just like, and she's like, I mean, I'm still going to call her frumpy because she is kind of like frumpy, you know? Um, but I respect her in the guise that she's doing what she's doing. But, you know, you have to find some kind of a balance, I guess. And she's, you know, in the middle of finding that balance. Needless to say, they're all now here at Lori's house. Lana's there. Jennifer's there. Um, Amy gets there. Now, Lana pretty much knows what kind of person Amy is. She knows that she's a gossiping wench and that she doesn't have a life of her own. Therefore, she feels the need to create this friction amongst other women so that, you know, she can have a life and laugh at all of these other women, which is kind of like fucked up because if you have a person like that in your life, like you need to get rid of them pronto. There's no reason why anybody should have a woman like that in their life. Sorry to say I'm a woman. I know I get rid of people like that immediately. I do not keep them in my life. I have enough drama as it is. So here they all are. They're talking. They're having a good time. The minute Alicia comes in, the mood changes. Um, you know, Lana decides to confront her in front of everybody and basically say, look, you know what? I misjudged you. I took upon something that Amy said and I apologize. And she was being like really apologetic. And Alicia, she just fucked up. She was saying things, you know, about the trainer and, and all of this stuff. It didn't work out in her favor. It made her look bad all over again. Um, well, yeah, it made her look bad all over again because of, you know, earlier in the episode when she was having the conversation with the girls. So while Lana was trying to make good and trying to start a clean slate, it just didn't work out. So, again, here we are with a show with women who own their own businesses. And I think I need to say that it's kind of sad that as a woman and a business owner myself, that anybody would think that, you know, women, whether they're rich or they're not rich or they're in between or, you know, they're just getting by, that we kind of all sit around and and gossip about other women and just kind of like do nothing all day but go to shooting parties or shooting picnic um, and bash other women. Not all women are like that. So while I disagree with the concept of the show, I guess the other part is, is that, you know, here are these women who made it in their own right in their own business or whatever it is that they're doing but um it just makes me question what happens when you come into money which i think is what i mentioned in my last uh reality tv short like what happens when you come into this glorious amount of money and then you just don't know how to fucking behave i don't know i would like to find out <laughs> um but not because I just want to, you know, just walk into a ton of money. I work for my money. You understand what I'm saying? And some people, you know, do different things to get their money that they didn't work so hard for it and then still act like the fucking fool. So while the show goes on, I'm going to keep watching because it's kind of like that cattiness that I think people enjoy watching from the other end of the TV. Sin City Rules is uh aired on tlc i don't know what channel that is on your cable station but um it airs on sundays at 10 o'clock which i was wrong last week i apologize i said it was on fridays it's actually at sundays at 10 o'clock so while dexter is over um for this season now we can all watch sin city rules and see what's going to happen next and if you don't want to watch trust that i will be giving my commentary on another trashy show with again depicting women like we're all dumb with money what else can i say <laughs> this is maribel blue signing off on another version of kem top talk reality tv short and don't forget to pick up your shirt mugs i have a whole store there cafepress.com forward slash kink e mag shop which i'll definitely include in this link so until then bye peace